Hello and welcome back to another episode of log to log the channel where two mates talk about watches. Now in today's episode we have a very special watch that we are going to review. This does belong to Ollie. What is it? So yes, uh, this is actually a few months old now, but we haven't got around to talking about it, and that is uh, the Girard Perigo Laureato, um, 42 mil with, with the blue dial. Yeah, very, very nice watch. And it's the watch I'm wearing today, as you can see. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about it in a bit more detail. This obviously wasn't a light decision that you made, purchasing this watch. Um, obviously it's very expensive, it's kind of mid to top end <laughs> luxury, isn't it? So when you made the decision, were there other watches you were considering before buying this particular watch? Yeah, so I mean, as you know, I did have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, yes. yeah. which I then kind of sold into the Rolex Pump, I guess you could call it. <laughs> <laughs> the Rolex Pump. It, it has even gone up even more in value now. Though. Like, okay, like, what's the, it? The, what's prices, it the prices are ridiculous. I think it's over, it's over 7,000 I think now in the UK, or, no. or even 8,000 for a watch that I paid like half of that for, yeah. um, which I think is your, your particular which is ridiculous. reference was uh, discontinued, wasn't it? Yeah, the white yeah. dial, the yeah. white dial one was discontinued. So I sold that um, with the intention of using some of that money to buy another watch. Um, you weren't thinking of putting it into crypto then? No, uh, <laughs> not, right. all it, yeah. not all of it, not all of it. But so yeah, that, that that was kind of what enabled me, I suppose, to be in a position to be able to buy this watch. Yeah. And and I I had like a long list of criteria. I, I kind of knew that I wanted something that had like an integrated bracelet that looked quite sporty. Okay. Basically, like what everyone wants. Like yes, a, yeah. The kind of a very in vogue aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Like an like an AP or the you sure. know the Patek Nautilus this type of thing. Yeah. Um. But clearly, I can't, yeah, they're, they're just. Yeah. Firstly, impossible to get. Yes. Secondly, far too much money to be yeah. spending on yeah. a watch. Yeah. So, so let's not get it twisted for. though. This is <laughs> this is still a very expensive watch. It is an expensive and, and, watch, and probably a watch that many people would would say is like a Grail watch. Yeah. Or a watch that is highly sought after. Yeah, and and I honestly like I I never really thought I would be in a position to be able to be buying this type mm. of watch. So I, I am kind of aware that it, I'm in a very privileged position here. Mm. Um. And actually, the, this watch in particular, I didn't really have an intention of buying it when I did buy it. It was something that I was looking at as a more long-term thing to get. Sure. Um, but I went. I was in Spain actually. My my girlfriend is Spanish, and it was like our our first time in Madrid together. I went into a jeweler to try on the Breitling Chronomat, yes, which, which yeah. we had tried on together. Yes, in our, in our vlog. In our vlog, check that one out in London. Um, Cause I wanted to show it to her. I went in, they didn't have it, so we kind of walked around. I tried on a GG Le a Coupe. Yeah, 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 you can, you can touch it. We tr I tried on a GG Le Coupe, um, which I wasn't very impressed by, to be honest. And then I, I just sort of asked the guy, like, I don't suppose you have this watch, because it wasn't out on display, mm. and he kind of went out the back, or wherever they go, in a watch shop. Yeah, yeah. very mysterious, <laughs> out, isn't out it? Out the back to the shed. And he and he came back with this watch, and this was yeah, the last one they had, and they offered me a very a very good discount, um, which in the end actually got it pretty much down to the price that you could buy on Chrono Twenty Four for. Okay. Which so, is actually significantly less than retail. Like that. That is one of the things about this watch is it's very expensive, but at the same time I think you can get quite a significant discount. That's it, good. Because yeah. it's not a Rolex or AP or. or so, I tried it on and. Yeah, I think once you try it on, it's very hard to say, yeah. to say no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've tried it on a few times, and it is a yeah, it's an outstanding watch. Um, it, yeah, it's it's brilliant. Yeah. So so yeah, that that's kind of the story of how how I came to have this watch. So yeah, flew back to Spain with this with or flew back from Spain with this on my wrist, and and it's been very good part of my collection since then. Yeah. So I guess the first question in terms of you know the first encounter you had with this watch, what was it that stood out? For you with this watch, yeah. What unique features do you think it has? So I think it's it's tough to like really answer that question. I think without being able to like touch and, and feel and see these yes, things, yeah. because I think once you get into watches and you start trying on watches in different price tiers, you you start to realize that 
there are there are differences in just like the brushing, the, yes. the finishing yeah. on the metal, just like things like that, that you don't necessarily see on photos or videos that well. And I think that that's like, as soon as I tried this on, like it, it just pops so much. Like the... it's, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal really. I mean, you've got that lovely anti-reflective coating on, is it on, on both sides of the, of the sapphire crystal? I'm not sure. But I don't know. It certainly looks as though it, it has that in place. Um, yeah, it's got a very high quality crystal, I think. Absolutely. And that you can really see the dial. And I think just like the the number of different finishes where you've got like that, the kind of high polished cir circular kind of insert almost behind the octagonal bezel. Yes. And then you've got brushing on the top of the bezel, polished sides, brushing on the case, polished yes. sides. Like there's, there's just I mean, so many just, different finishes. I mean, you're just finishes. moving it now in the light and it's just abs it's absolutely picking up every angle, yeah. isn't it? They've, they've, it looks amazing so they've done a really great job there yeah um and that that's what i wanted really was something that had that kind of yeah something that played in the light in that way so yeah. i think that was the initial thing that really captured my attention yeah. with it yeah in terms of the the actual the brand itself gerard perigo it's, it's it's a brand that perhaps not many people know much about so yeah. can you just give a little bit of detail about about the brand a bit of history yeah, so it, it's a Swiss brand. Yeah. Um, it's it's been going for all, over two hundred and fifty years now, I think. So it's actually, okay. it's actually one of the oldest brands. Yes, yeah. and and it's still a completely kind of uh, in house manufacturer. So they they create everything completely in house, mm. which is obviously again like as a as a watch nerd, like this is yeah, the type yeah, of thing yeah. that you kind of get. These you, are all like ticks in the box, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> it, gets, it gets you excited when yes, you yeah. when you have something like this. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, the movement's completely in house. Mm -hmm. Um. And, and actually this watch was one of the watches, or oh well, it was originally released in the 1970s, so it came out in that same period as, uh, you know, the Royal Oak, yes. as, as the Nautilus, yeah. um, as, as all these type yeah. of watches. Very much at a point in watch history where the integrated bracelet was, was a massive thing. Yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this was actually the, the second one, I believe, in that kind of trend. So, okay. it's, so it's not necessarily like a, a complete copycat, like it yes, has its own yeah. place in history. Sure. Um, although I think, yeah, it, there's obviously clearly elements here that are inspired by the Audemars yes. Piguet. Yes, yes, especially yeah. the kind of dial finishing, I think, yeah. is, is similar, but not exactly the same. Sure, yeah. Okay, so we've discussed, you know, reasons why you were attracted to this watch in terms of the aesthetics. Mm. What about the dimensions of this watch? Because this looks like a very thin, easy to wear watch. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a 42 mil case, Yeah. but it, it doesn't wear like a 42 to compared to, for example, my Tudor, mm. which you really feel on the wrist because this, this is super, super thin. Um, so it's only about 11 millimeters thick. I, I don't know okay. if, you can, if you can see that there. And the, the way that the, the kind of lugs are formed, they really... Yeah, they, they kind of drop off very yeah. dramatically, don't they? They drop off quite dramatically. So it, yeah. it really hugs your wrist. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it really like slips under the under the cuff nicely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, like that. We like then, that. That's good. And time. then the bracelet has a very nice taper as well. Um, it's it's a butterfly clasp, so it's a okay. kind of double deployment. Yeah. Butterfly clasp. The only thing I would I would say that's a bit of a negative about that is you you, you don't have any micro adjustment, of course. Mm. Um, but because it's such a kind of thin watch, because it curves to the wrist so nicely. It, it's still very comfortable to wear. Yeah, no, I agree. It's it's a joy to wear. Um, as you say, it's very light. And I mean, just looking at that now, the way the lugs, it's almost perfectly kind of attached to your wrist, isn't it? Yeah. It kind of sits so nicely. It, yeah, it really feels like um, a, I don't know, it, it doesn't really feel like a like my other watches. It has no. a completely different wearing characteristic yeah, where it almost yeah. feels like just something has been wrapped around the wrist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it does feel like that. And I think if we compare this watch to your others, other watches in your collection, I think this strikes a fine balance between sort of being dressy, mm. but it's, there's certainly sporty elements that, that can be seen as well. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Yeah, and, and that, that again is exactly what I was looking for, was something that you could yeah, wear to a variety of different things. Um, yeah, something that could be dressed up, but also something that I think you can wear with like a t-shirt yeah. and jeans yeah. and, you yeah. and you wouldn't look weird. Um, maybe you'd look a bit flashy, but yeah. that's uh, <laughs> yeah. And I think it's certainly a watch that only real watch enthusiasts would pick up on and appreciate. I think you know if if someone recognised that on your wrist, I think they'd be, you know, safe to say they they do like their watches. It's one of those watches that, you know, people don't necessarily gravitate towards initially. 
Yeah, I don't think many um, people know Gerard Perrigo no, as a brand. No, a very underappreciated and underrated brand, I think. It's going to sound really stupid saying this, but actually it is kind of good value for money in a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it is completely in-house. Yeah. You're, you're getting a, a lot for your... You for are, yeah, yeah. In a way, yeah. but it's still... It feels like a true luxury piece, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely no question. Um, yeah. So if we move on to, obviously there's an exhibition case back which mm. demonstrates and highlights a very nice movement, if we just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so I can, I can mention the movement, so it, yeah, this was another thing that I wanted when I was buying a new watch was yeah, an exhibition yeah, case yeah, back, yeah, yeah. because I wanted something where you can, s I, it, yeah, it's nice You're to You're a pervert. Of, yeah. <laughs> well, there, there's, no, there's no other way of putting it. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a case back addiction. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no. It, I think it is nice to kind of see where the where your money's gone sometimes, and be able, yeah. be able to see the movement. Yeah. And this is completely in house. Um, it's got fifty four hour power reserve, which which is decent. Yeah, it's, it's not good. terrible, but it's yeah, it, it's it's a decent amount. It's yeah. what I think it's what you'd what you'd want. I yeah. think. Um, and it's also been designed really nicely. I, th I think it's a fairly new movement that they debuted in this watch uh, okay. in twenty seventeen. Yes. And it was designed to actually kind of fill the larger case. So. When you when you look at it, and we'll put some footage in the the movement really, like yeah. It, it, sometimes you have an exhibition case back, and there's a bit of a gap around the edge of the movement. Yes, yeah. This one really fills the whole thing. Yeah, uh, kind of the, the entire space has been utilised, hasn't it? Yeah, and uh, it's been decorated very nicely. Like it, it's got yeah. really nice brushing on there. It's got the kind of Cote de Genève. Um, I can't believe how thin the rotor is as well. I've not, I've not seen a watch that has yeah, such a thin rotor. It's a super thin rotor, and then it, it's got like a gold uh, balance wheel in there. So there's, it, it's been decorated really nicely. Mm. Again, it's not the same level as Patek, AP, this type of thing. But in terms of the next step below, I think that this is this yeah, holds its own yeah. with any of with yeah. any of those brands. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where GP sit, isn't it? You've got your, you know your true, true luxury, holy grails, yeah. you know, your Vacherons, uh, APs, Patek, and then I think GP sit just below there, yeah. quite comfortably as well. Um, perhaps, you know, you could argue Zenith are in there a little bit, but yeah, it, it's certainly up there, isn't it? Yeah. It being a, a true luxury uh, brand. Yeah. And the crazy thing is you can buy one of these on Chrono 24 for the same price as a Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 yeah, at this point in time. We are in a crazy time <laughs> when it comes to watches and Rolex. If you have the dial, I can sort of pick up, there's obviously applied markers, you've got an applied logo, mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the date window at three o'clock. Yes. Is that something that, that you were kind of, that you sat on the fence about initially? Yeah, that so... something that didn't really worry you? I'm not... Like, a, a date window isn't really something I have to have on a watch, so yes, yeah. to be honest, it, it wasn't something that made me think, think like, yeah, this, this, it didn't add to the watch for me, okay. personally. I think that the way it's been done is is quite good, though, like, it, it is colour matched. Yes. Um, although the colour matching actually isn't perfect, that's probably, like, one okay. thing I would say is, is that intentional? Is not do we perfect. know if that's intentional or...? I don't know. I, okay. don't, I don't know why you would do that Can intentionally, that... because it's just a slightly darker blue than right, the blue okay. on the dial. But you don't really, yeah, you don't yeah, really yeah. notice it unless you get close. Um, Fine. I think it works well. Yeah. I don't, I don't think you really notice it unless you look really, yeah. really close up and you put your face right in the watch. Sure. On the wrist. Not a problem. No. Um, and one thing actually that I think is really n nice on the date wheel is the font that they've used. Like it's a slightly, it's a bit unusual and it, and it matches uh, the font perfectly that they have on the, the logo text that's also applied to the dial. Okay. Which I think is like a nice, again it's just like the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a small touch. Okay. Um, and the only other thing I want to call out actually on the, on the case is the, um, the crown. Because it's a really nice big crown. Which I think is like you know part of the kind of sporty DNA of this. Yes, yeah. And it is a really, it's just really nice to interact with. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that, that? that brings me on to a point actually. The action <laughs> when winding on this watch is phenomenal. Yeah. It's so smooth, isn't it? It is. It, it's crazy. It's like buttery smooth. Yeah, I, I think it's it is probably the the second best. I've oh, felt. okay. I think that the Rolex still has has the edge wow. slightly. And that was half the price. Yeah, although Almost. now not. Now, now not. <laughs> but fundamentally it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. RRSP, yes. Yeah. 
Um, it says a lot about Rolex's uh, yeah. policy, isn't it? Yeah, their, their movements, I think, are have some of the nicest action. But this is still... It's amazing, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's yeah. smooth, smooth, yeah, smooth. Yeah. It's just like all the kind of small little details and the ways that you interact with the watch are just executed really nicely. And that's probably what you, yeah, kind of what you pay for almost when yeah. you want to get to this price point. Yeah. So I think gen generally, overall, what would you say? I don't this watch. Yeah, I don't really like it. It's no, very, no, it's yeah. not very good. Um, <laughs> but in in all seriousness, though, I, I think it is absolutely outstanding. Like it, it has really lived up to to what I was expecting yeah, from it. Yeah. Um, from the moment I put it on the wrist, I think it was just like yeah, it kind of blew me away really. Yeah. And and it still does when I look down and I'm like, oh, this yeah, is actually yeah. my watch. Sometimes I can't really believe it. Yeah. Um, that's, that's very sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think. It's quite dangerous, isn't it, when you dip your toes in, you know, at this price point? Yeah. Because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a downward spiral from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, um, it's a slippery slope. You're yeah, be, you know, absolutely. Bankrupt on the streets soon, but with yeah. a collection of, of amazing watches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you've summed up your thoughts uh, really well on this watch. Um, as you say, it's an outstanding piece, and um, yeah, I think any any serious watch collector. With, with with the money to afford it would would be very happy with this. Yeah, I, I think it's hard to fault. Yeah, and yeah, and you like it, right? I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah, uh, but I will give it back to you now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wraps up another video from us, Lug to Lug. I've been Ben, and I've been Ollie. Uh, yeah, thank you for stopping by again. As always, please like, subscribe, leave us your thoughts um, on the on the comment section below. We'll be back very soon with another video for you guys. Stay tuned. Thanks. Cool. Bye.